Pretty exciting. Her mom, Rita, in attendance today as well. She's a Boulder, Colorado resident and never misses this game right here in her backyard to root on her daughter. She's been doing that for decades. And I know it's a special moment that she can be in the house today. Over 9,000 fans expected it would be one of the top 10 largest crowds here for the CU women's team. And they win the tip out of the gate. So that'll get the crowd going early. As I say, if Rita can make it here in these temps this weather, you got this, fans. That's exactly <laughs> right. Sherrod will take the first shot. And Jalen missing, but Quay Miller coming up with the board. You know, we saw CU start so sluggish on Friday night. This is one of those, they want to make this momentum mark early. That's really the message from J.R. Payne, too. You know, you got to play clean. It's not just about being locked in physically. It's about being locked in mentally and emotionally against a team like Stanford. You can't have any mistakes, the mental mistakes especially. Shot fired up by Hannah Jump, but a miss on Stanford's end. Yes, every mistake just that much more heightened. Quay Miller is wide open underneath with a trailing Cameron Brink, but she gets back just in time. Cameron Brink, the reigning Pac-12 player of the week. Of course, that's an accolade she's had plenty of times. Very often feeds her, but she gets right under Quay Miller. So there's the first for someone to break the seal, and it came with Stanford taking an early 2-0 lead. And Stanford's so good at that high-low look and such a good seal by Cameron Brink. Conley hands it off and a whistle. And looking the ball around as the shot clock winds down to six. Here you have to turn and shoot. She does it as the shot clock. So smooth. She can take it off the ball. No help, right? You've got to stay honest on those Stanford shooters. Air nice side. Conley attacking. Often the high post feeds it back to jump for three, and the long rebound goes to Yriothen. Sherrod coming in, and she's going to pick up a foul. The shot clock winding down there. Janiah Harold checking in for the Cardinal. And a bucket. Quarter that she started scoring and ended up in double figures. There, just a misread on the play. Quite cut the wrong way as Frida tried to pass to her. Yeah, an unfortunate turnover, and like you said, exactly. Frida, they need her to be on point. Cameron Brink's going to shoot that, and she makes it. So okay. tough. You can take Stanford deep into the shot clock. And Frida Ooh. tries to answer on the other end. Buff's just looking cold right now. Because Stanford's going to have an answer. Great. We can use every bit of shot clock. We've got plenty of options. She's CU shooting just 14%. Cameron Brink, why not try again? She's hot. <laughs> well, here at the game, CU Event Center, this basket... Upon review during the timeout, not allowed. You see it just barely went off. Shot clock did as the ball was leaving the fingertips of very often. So it is, in fact, 10 to 2, not 12 to 2, when we last left you. See you, they have been cold, shooting 14% from the field, and they've had a really tough time with turnovers. It almost went to be another. Instead, the jump. And just a little sloppy, right? Certainly some defensive pressure, but certainly some of those turnovers, just bad decisions. Rita Foreman for three. She can't get it to go. And Cam Brink pulling one in. 999 rebounds now for Brink. She's like plenty of career milestones. And that ball is going to be over. So it'll go. Aaron Von Ley walking over to the scores table, checking in. Green set for Foreman. She'll stop and pop. And can she Ooh. get the home roll? <laughs> Finally. Very often feeding Brink. That's the lethal combo right there. And Brink can't make on the fadeaway jumper, but an offensive board. And Sherrod tips it right into the hands of a Cardinal. Brink for three. Can she make it again? Missing there. Very often with the putback. Best, of course, in the Pac-12. And double-double at Stanford. 25 points, 16 rebounds. Don't forget she had four assists, two steals. Passing out to Quinn Miller. Shot clock at seven as Frida Foreman pulls up. And they're going to have a late whistle. But you saw the instant substitution. Can't afford for her to get into foul trouble. 88% free throw shooter. Got over the 1,100 point both teams playing with a bit of a shortened bench. Sarah Rose Smith out with a mild concussion for the Buffs. She missed the game on Friday against Cal. And Courtney Ogden missing once again for Stanford. No shot there. They're going to call the foul on the floor. 
to say, that's where now you got to get strategic. Two, two quick fouls in that first quarter, that changes the dynamic. Miss three. And a fight for the rebound once again going to Stanford. And Kendall Weta, a rare instance of her being outworked for something. Really, Clardy got in there. Lapolo driving, three on the shot clock. Layup no good, and McLeod comes up with a board. She had five of those, speaking of big off the bench on Friday. 12-6, Stanford up. And there's going to be a check foul, so Hannah Jump will pick up her first. To make the contact, Gert draw that foul. There's another foul, so Ooh. quickly this is going to bring Tara Vanderveer to her feet, and she's going to have to go to the bench. Hannah Jump sits down. She, you want her on the floor. She is your floor leader. No, you got to take a seat, so now that mental game comes to transfer from Michigan making a statement here as the Buffs climbing back in this one they're down by three after a bit of a disjointed possession as well answering on the other end can't do it and tangled up on the floor Charlotte Whitaker and Kiki Iriafin five personal fouls for the Buffs and we'll see Kiki Iriafin shoot free throws How well she compliments Cameron Brink. You go from two years of playing behind really talented players, Haley Jones, not knowing exactly what your role is going to be. And there's another whistle. You don't have Cameron Brink in there to know you've got your second line of defense in there. Mm, 22nd collegiate game, and she was just named as a Wooden Award midseason top 25 finalist. Of course, Cameron Brink also on that list for Stanford. Stolen away by none other than Kendall Weta up to Sharon. The Buffs right back in it. It's a one-point game. What a good moment. Those two work so well together, complement each other so well. Beautiful look. Buffs average over 11 steals a game. Kendall Weta back-to-back steals. She's going to try and take it all the way, and she got the foul. And kudos to Weta to continue to push it. But once again, those two, their defensive effort and their speed, they go for the sloppy handoff. Quite honestly, Stanford does. Weta knows she's got Sherrod right there for the easy lay-in. Clardy picking up her second, heads to the bench. Janiah Harrell comes in, and on the roll, Weta has just tied the game for the first time. Can't take the lead on her second. And he often wants the ball back. Quay trying to get a hand in there. Now double team. Buffs defense. Looking for another steal. Shot clock at six. They're going to have to shoot. And Sherrod rips it away. Another steal for the Buffs. She has Kendall wanted to pass it to this time. Connection good. Buffs showing a little bit of zone look there. And get the turnover in the bucket. The Buffs take the lead 16-14. Sherrod late to get back. Erie often kicks it outside. Lapolo over and the three good by Dimitri. That'll quiet the crowd a bit. 17-16. Five seconds on the clock. Sherrod will keep the ball. Pull up and off the glass at the buzzer. It all counts the same. Wow. <laughs> What a back and forth, a couple possessions there. And it ends up that the home team, a couple steals in this game. She's now sixth all time, 240 of those for Jalen Sherrod. So the turnovers, <laughs> start the first quarter was all about the buffs turning the ball over. And then all of a sudden, Stanford got a nice dose of the aggressive defense. And right there, the defense getting back. Hannah jumped back in the game, and she swats at Foreman's three. Maddie Nolan for three. And the board from Erie Offen. She fights through two buffs and gets it up to Lapolo. St. Erie Offen all over those boards, seven boards for her so far. Again, she's a tough one to box out. Come on, 16 at Utah. Dimitri and Cameron Brink. 
Turns on Charlotte Whitaker and inside area often over Miller, no good. The second quarter. Quay Miller attacking the hoop, goes up hard. No call and gets it on the second. Eight completely straight up. Those those whistles have got to be a frustrating part of your game. Who's gonna check back in? A lot of that coming the you know second half of the first quarter, second five minutes, they went cold a little bit after CU started cold. So things got all even out. Dimitri close out by Quay Miller. She didn't even help too much. She didn't leave her for too long. Wouldn't knock it down. Dimitri got in foul trouble at Utah at four though, so ended up with just four points, but now six here in the contest against the Buffs off two threes. Speaking of three, open the Mary off the handoff to Dimitri, and that's a three attempt. Weak side board. And goes Donna. We'll keep it for the Cardinal. Bruno Aguero waiting to check in. Shot clock at five. And how about Kendall Weta? Getting the hand in there and coming up with another takeaway, pushing it up to Frida Foreman. Sherrod for three. Jalen Sherrod! You know all about it. And you know she's hungry, just as hungry as Quinn Miller is to get her first win against Stanford. Sherrod's been there. She knows what it's like. How did that basketball... Three for four for Sherrod from the floor. She has nine points. Buffs up by five. Foreman to the corner. That's Quay Miller's shot. Can she get it? She does. The crowd's going crazy here in Boulder. Buffs trying to hold her off of that milestone here today. Up by eight in the second quarter. Their defense has turned it up a notch. And a lot of that thanks to the play of Kendall Wetta. And you know her mama is still just as nervous as she was when she was watching her as a player. Oh, <laughs> Watch her as Charlotte today might be second guessing that for sure. <laughs> what yes. underneath finds a cutting Quay Miller. That's going to go right off her sticky Stanford defense event in that lane. Just not what you're looking for. Very often at the high post. Over to Harrell. She's going to shoot and she gets fouled. And now she's at the line. Tania Harrell knocking down the three point sophomore from Sacramento. Rod now has two, along with Aaronette Monley and Whitaker. And those are those passes that are so tough against Stanford. They've got the height, they've got the reach. Just tough to really make that connection in a lot of traffic against Stanford defense. We have to set the screen and. Polo driving in, she'll dish it back out, and the ball knocked around. The same with Sanford as the shot clock's at seven. Fury often takes it to Whitaker, and one. Double, double, and we're not even halfway through the game. She's just such an eye for the board. So she's used to big crowds, and she likes the noise. Maddie Nolan for three, and she gets it off the pass. Great execution by CU there. 31-28, Buffs lead. Break that scoring drought. Hannah jump on the other end, gets the roll. Just with the two big ones and Brink and Erie often. He's been on the bench for quite some time. Weta with five, feeds Miller on a bounce pass, and and one opportunity coming. <laughs> you know what I said about it's really hard to make those passes in traffic, <laughs> except when they do work at the shot clock's winding down. Ooh. And they're going to call it against Clay Miller, an offensive foul. Harrell throws up the shot. Probably not the look you were no. expecting to get off that momentum help from Coy Miller's offensive foul. And it's tough without Brink in there, without that high low. They become a little less dimensional in terms of that, what it takes to defend them. Sadler driving in. She found the lane. Again, now you have Iriathan a little bit more aware of being aggressive. Doesn't want to give away too many fouls. And Sadler just finding the right wrinkle. Buffs fans on their feet for the final 12 seconds here in the half. Three-point lead for Colorado. Throwing up a prayer and no go for Hannah Jump. Weddell have the last shot. And it goes in. This place is 
This is going nuts! Rightfully so, after a slow start from Colorado, what a fast finish to two quarters of play. 36-30. Cameron Brink back in the game. Again, two fouls for her, so set on the bench. A bunch there in the first half. Stanford will have the first opportunity to inch closer to CU and the missed feed from Ariafin. Sherrod will drive in and she'll go right at Cameron Brink, who has a block. You know, Sherrod ain't going to shy away. She'll say, okay, let's try to get you in some more foul trouble. And the made three. Comes the speed of Sherrod and she'll sh slow it up to get it to Maddie Nolan for three. That's no good. Again, another somewhat kind of sleepy start, which is curious for both of these teams. Just one team scored so far, and that's Stanford. And they're 13 points for Iriafin, 12 rebounds. So a good weekend of double doubles for her in the Mountain Time Zone. She had one at Utah as well on Friday. Four men get on the board in the third quarter. And as a shooter, right, that's sometimes just what you need. Keep shooting until this starts to drop. And then, especially somebody like Frida, where you can get so hot so quick. She got so hot in the second half against Cal. Didn't have a bucket in the first half. And then ended up scoring 14 points. Had four made threes. Doing what she does. Erie often fires off a three. And Quay Miller will come up with a rebound. Back to a four-point buffs advantage. And Foreman just driving in. You know, spotted for three, but... She really has that ability to see a lane sometimes. The polo inside, Iriafin faces Aronette Von Ley and can't get the jumper to go. A fight for the ball, and Quay Miller comes up with it. Foreman inside, and Aronette Von Ley up. Iriafin trying to hand the ball off. And again, those are the kind of possessions of turnovers that hurt in a game like this. First personal on Iriafin. Oh my goodness, Kendall Weta found a lot. Meaning, how much does she bring into the game to your team? She is that difference maker. Closes in on the polo who drives in the tap. Katia driving. Weta drives with her left. She'll kick out to Quay Miller for three. You know those rivalries, those teams that you always want to be part of that win. That's a miss, and Aaron Von Ley flying in for the board. <laughs> Again, smart to get rid of it. She knows she's collecting her travel. She doesn't get rid of that ball quick. Buffs haven't had a lot of success against Stanford. Just 1-19 and 19 all time in conference play against them. Five total wins in the series history. Foreman gets blocked. Cameron Brink comes in for a block at the wing. Ooh, worth a block for Cameron Brink, and that's exactly what she does. One of the best in the country at blocking shots. And a smart look outside, just can't knock it down. But a good look on the other end. Gara, the freshman, has really stepped up her game for Tara Vanderveer off the bench this year. Sadler takes it in, goes over Cameron Brink, but the ball still ends up with 22. That's the tough part. You're going in against Brink. You've got to have some weak side rebounders ready, right? The percentage of that shot goes down instantly when you're going up against Brink. Von Ley and Brink going at it in the post. Brink's down, late to get up, and she's trailing. CU has numbers if they recognize it. Von Ley inside. Wayne Miller with an offensive board and put back. Brink frustrated she didn't get that call. She's looking for it again. Brink turns and shoots. No go. Nine points for Quay Miller, by the way, with eight rebounds. And in the mix once again. I was going to say, surprise we're not seeing a timeout by Tara Vanderveer. Her team's lost a little something. See you, though. And the Wada. They haven't scored in almost three minutes. And, you know, it was an uncharacteristic, just the whole team looking a bit deflated during that run by CU in the third quarter. And they turn the ball over on the inbounds play. And a jump through right to Sherrod. Off to Maddie Nolan for a Really tough to compete against that. Maddie Nolan knocking it down in a big moment. And again, CU, when you're training buckets for threes, that makes that deficit harder to chip away for Stanford. Third three of the day for Maddie Nolan. And 
Kateri Offen. That was 14 points on the day. Double figures now in 16 of the 17 at Stanford. The Buffs have that 17 to 2 run. Five different players scored, so really distributing the ball well today. Sherrod backs it up as the shot clock's in single digits. It's at seven. She drives under the basket and make sure you use every bit of possession every time down the floor. 4 0 in conference for the first time in the Pac 12 era, looking to continue one of their hottest starts in school history with a win over Stanford. Cameron Brink has something to and say. We saw, you know, we talk about how much CU is in a little bit more of a position right now with this lead. But we mentioned last year's double OT. We saw Stanford down 14 battle back. These two teams have a pretty strong history. Stanford traditionally, as you mentioned, coming out on top, but always a good competition recently between these two teams. Dimitri feeds inside. Iriafa kicks out to Cameron Brink. She gets the ball back, turns and spins with no rim, and the ball ends up with the buffs. Just great hustle by Cameron Brink. Five seconds in the quarter. Sherrod driving and making. Jalen Sherrod makes the bucket. And after three quarters of play, CU Buffs fans had a lot to cheer about. They're a 58 to 41. Biggest lead of the game at 17, or close to the biggest lead. Jalen Sherrod doing her thing, getting in there, trying to get a big Buffs win. With the crowd on hand. The sixth man they've been today. Total attendance, 9,111. That is the ninth largest for a women's basketball game here at the event center. And it's the largest crowd they've had since 1994. It's been 30 years since a crowd like this has come in. And you have a feeling it's going to continue to build and build. Jalen Sherrod, a huge part of that. She got on the microphone last night during the men's game. Over 10,000 for CU. Been into that foul trouble. The polo over two buffs. She misses. Can't brink with the rebound. Can't make it rebound again over to Yuri Offen. And she'll pull out. So lots of opportunities. This possession for Stanford from the corner. Dimitri. <laughs> I was going to say, she's just coming up with Sherrod goes one on one over Harold, and the ball goes over the rim. Tonight was some good contest. Good defense there. Kamaletta on the polo. Carroll goes long three, and there it is, keeping him in the game. Weta delivers the ball in to Maddie Nolan. Say, Maddie Nolan, you know those guards get into the post territory. They get really excited when they make one of those strong moves. <laughs> but really good awareness by Maddie Nolan. She's got a wide open lane, no help side defense, and a nice little post move connects with the bucket and the free throw. Good three point play. Here's a dozen in the contest. 61 47 buffs. But they got a hand on it and they cause another Stanford turnover. And good, really smart three quarter defense, just enough to be able to disrupt that pass. And of course, Weta's right there. Frida feeds in. Quay got caught under the basket. She kicks it back out. And a long three attempts coming from Frida Foreman. It ends up right on the chest of Quay Miller, and she's able to mark that as a rebound. Yeah, exactly. You can count that stat. <laughs> no one was ready for that one. Nice little move there. Pulls up to the jumper, but can't connect. Some confidence. Why not go for it with a sizable lead here? Indeed. Give her the green light. She's got it. Stanford needs the three ball. Polo thought about it. Pulls out. Erie off and attacks. A nice move, but can't get the finish. Can't break coming through. So she's got that NIL deal. She can build one. That's right. <laughs> she can work that. <laughs> Pulls up. No roll for the buff. And how about the on the cloud? She went to work, but got the foul call. But yeah, Coach T wasn't thrilled with that one. He was all over his players. So foul out by Charlotte Whitaker. She'll head to the bench. Again, going hard, you need that bench, especially when you're going up against this duo of Erie Offen and Brink. You've got to disrupt that as much as you can. You've got to know that you've got a pipeline on your bench that you're going to have to expend some fouls. Approaching the five-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Dimitri tries for a three. There's a whistle and count it. Four-point play coming. Dang, a little so. bit of traffic and congestion there. 
there's traffic and there's a little bit of contact there on that screen. Brink. Brink will go for three. And Brianna McLeod just fighting for the board. Hand it off to Foreman. Thought about the long three. Dribbled in. It's such a smart play. Use more of the clock. You had Von Ley down there. You could have gone for that easy two. Not a bad strategy. Wait for that clear bucket. That's just the maturity of this buff squad. <laughs> and there it is. Get it to Von Ley anyways. She attacks Kiki Erie often. She tried for it. She tried. I'll try to get this charge. Nope. Von Ley, just solid post work. Six for Von Ley. She had 19 on Friday against Cal and some tough defense on that end. But Erie often must. Stanford looking for a big stop. 2.40 to go in the game. Inside to Von Ley. Outside to Miller. And she'll dribble in with five on the shot clock. Throws it up and gets the hook. Making it work down low. A double digit lead for the Buffs and an open shot for Iriafin, but she goes cross court for the three look. A miss for Harrell and an offensive board. Again, just awareness if you need a little more. And a jump attacking, can't get the roll. And another offensive rebound for Sanford. Jump goes for three. Long board, and how about black uniforms all <laughs> over it? Good grief. Patting those stats on the offensive board. It's one way to work the clock. Harold for three and finally gets it. Multiple opportunities for Stanford. And the Buffs trying to work the clock. 65-57. Passing it off in the perimeter and a near steal. From Clarity. Three, you gotta get it up. And Sherrod throws it up. Just in time, it hits Rin. Just good defense by Stanford. You just want to make it nervous enough, and here they are. Under a minute to go inside the Erie Offen. She puts the moves on. Too hard up a Quay Miller. Erie Offen, a 73% free throw shooter. for both teams. Student section getting into it. What a game for Kiki Uriakin again. The whole line has been a bit disrupted. Stays solid. Knocks two down. Of course. Oh! Oh, boy. Ouch! Great <laughs> over Listen. by Tara Vanderveer. And now the Stanford player's coming over to make sure the longtime head coach is okay. Listen, you get to that many wins, okay? <laughs> it, it comes after a little bit of time. And now it is a little bit bittersweet, right? The last time they'll play together as the Pac-12 Conference against each other in Boulder. And here she is knocking on the door of that milestone. And with the inbound, Stanford starting to come out. 45 seconds to go. Ball loose on the ground. Fight comes play. out very often. <laughs> After all the early whistles, you get nothing late. Yeah, it seems inconsistent. And they're going to call it travel there. That is frustrating for Stanford because they had all the momentum. Paper for the bonus. Miller to get the ball into Sherrod. Cam Brink will have to foul her. And the bucket with no whistle. And how about when Cam Brink Brink's trying to foul? <laughs> she doesn't get the whistle. jump into a cutting. Dimitri fires off the three. Chasing down the long rebound. It's going to be Kendall Weta and the quick foul whistle there. From the field. And for the bus. They continue to impress. But still finding a way to get things done. And a lot of that had to do with the three-pointer today. And distributing the three-pointer. Yeah, such a solid third quarter. Weta knocking down free throws. And now 12 seconds remain. you got to get a shot up. Iriafin to the corner, back to Iriafin for three, and that's an air ball. Clay Miller will hold the ball, and Dimitri will throw one more foul her way. But how little success CU has had against Stanford, the perennial powerhouse in the Pac-12. They have not found many wins against Stanford. Their lone win in conference play coming back in 2021. And now in front of the largest crowd the women's basketball program has seen in 30 years. They're knocking down for their second conference win against Stanford. And Quay Miller's first in her college career. That has to feel good. The polo throws up a prayer. Nothing there. A 71-59 victory for
for the number five team in the country. That is nine straight wins for the CU Buffs.